So it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, your speaker. And our speaker is Dr. <laughs> Kai Tsui. And we're most fortunate to have him at UC Davis as a visiting scholar for a few months. And he's back and forth a bit between Davis and China and back again. And today to speak to you students, to you guests and others about the food industry in China. Dr. Tui got his, uh, has two PhDs in food science from the number one ranked school of food science in China, uh, Jinan University, and then later got another PhD in managerial psychology from East China Normal University. And he has been uniquely in China, this is much more unique than in USA, had one foot in business and one foot in academia. And academia has been as an adjunct professor at Shanghai Jiao Tong University and also at, um, now I'm trying to remember the other university, Ocean University, okay. Shanghai Ocean University, both very highly regarded universities in Shanghai. I also, before I ask you to come up, Dr. Tui, I would like to just recognize in the audience Dean Wei Chen, Dean Professor Wei Chen, who's here till March 2nd now. He has so many responsibilities <coughs> at Jinan University. He is the dean of the largest school of food science, the same one, and classmate of Wei Chen. Uh, Wei Chen is with Kai, and so please stand up, yes. So he's around if anyone wants to speak with him. And then both of them got their PhD with Dr. Han Shu Jing's husband, uh, not husband, father, um, Zhao Li Ding, and he was the former president of the university. And Davis has had a long and deep relationship with this university. Let me say Dr. Ding got her PhD here in food science and technology, and she has for many years now been at Novozymes here in Davis. And she settled in Davis, so we just really have this China-Davis connection. And um, Charles Shoemaker has kindly helping here, and he's the one who did so much to start this relationship recently with the Global Studies students and with many relationships here um, at the university. So without further ado, hi, please come. Yeah. It's a Chinese. Uh, it's a Chinese tradition, yeah. Okay, so dear Sharon, Charlie, and friends, and members of the CIFAR, the first thing I'd like to say is thank you. Thank you for giving me the chance to talk about the food industry in China. Yeah, as, just as mentioned by Sharon, 20 years ago, I was a PhD student in food chemistry. But after graduation, I entered the business. So I had everyone know something about maybe molecular structure, maybe Maillard reaction, something like this. But after graduation, so many years passed, most of the knowledge I learned in the university I had forgotten. I'm sorry to say that. So today, maybe uh, I don't think it's a scientific seminar, maybe just a business lecture. Truth is saying, I'm a businessman. Um, loosely thinking business, man, no to drag the scholar. So in my presentation, maybe no too much conception, no mathematic model, no, no, no something like this, maybe just point of view. And there's some information in my presentation. Some statistics come from official statistics, and maybe some other data just come my personal business experience, okay? So today, I'd like to share four topics. I hope that's why your interest. Agricultural production, food consumption in future, food safety incident, investment opportunity in China. Okay, I hope that's your interest. The first one, agricultural production. So 20 years before this book, written by yeah, a famous uh, economics, uh -huh, Brown, this who will feed China? Uh -huh. I know, it's very influenced in China. I, I think maybe also very influenced in USA, yeah. It's keynote just as follows. It will be tempting to blame China for the likely rise in food price because its demand for food is exceeding the carrying capacity of its land and water resource. Putting excessive demand 
on its portable supplies from countries that are living within their carrying capacities. But China is the only one of scores of countries in this situation. It just happened to be the largest and by an accident of history, the one that tips the world balance from surplus to scarcity. So 20 years passed. Some prediction come true, but some note. Why? I'd like to share my views about this. Here is the world map. Mm -hmm. Pacific Ocean. Is it China? Yeah, it's USA. There's some similarity between two nations, but also some difference. Let's have a look. So, comparison of results between USA and China. The land area, I think you, you should not pay too much attention on the unit. Just right, okay, the yellow color is China. The blue color is USA. So you can see the land area of the USA and China nearly the same. Mm -hmm. But arable land, China maybe just 6% of that of USA. And you can see the population, wow, huge China. Okay, 1.4 billion. That's 20% of the population in the whole world, 4.5 times than that of the USA. And then GDP, that's the year 2014. China number two and USA number one. China is about 6% according compared with the US. And then angel coefficient. Maybe some students in food science and technology not familiar with this conception. It's referred to what percent of food consumption, consumption are in your whole salary or in your whole income. Mm -hmm. For example, in USA, if you earn $100 one year, $7 is consumed on the food. That's enough. That's okay. But in China, no. 35% uh, of income is spent on the food. Okay? That has been increased nowadays. When I was in my childhood, that's 30 years before, the angel coefficient was 70%. That means most of the China's income or salary had to spend on their food. That, this index can be sure as indication for living quality of the nation. So that means nowadays something changed, okay? And urbanization rate, that means what percentage of the population are living in the city. So in US, about 83rd percent population living in the city, but in China, it's about 54. So you can see something similarity and something difference. Now, figure two. Comparison of food production between USA and China. Just as I mentioned, okay, if something just compared China and the US, because the population is so huge, so you can see the total output green, the meat, and the beer, China is advanced. More beer, more meat, more green will be produced in China. But if per capita, per capita, very different. You can say per capita arable land, maybe China just one seventh of USA. Mm -hmm. And then per capita GDP, China maybe just one eighth of that of USA. And per capita income, no, China is just one ninth than that of USA. And you can say per capita green, uh -huh, China maybe just one fourth. And per capita meat and per capita beer, China is just one tooth. Okay, just half. Okay, compared with that of USA. That's the difference. Okay, so to some extent, I like to say USA is developed country and China is developing country. But that also means the growing potential. Okay? If in USA, I like to say more beer, more meat, more green is unnecessary. Okay? Nobody needs so much food. But in China, we have some capacity. Mm -hmm. And figure four, China population and cultivation land. You can see from 30 years before, 
that's 1980, okay? To nowadays, 2040, the arable land have no change at all. Mm -hmm. And you can see the population grow up precisely 38% during this 35 years old. Mm -hmm. And in this 35 years, population increased 38%, but there's no famine happened in China. What's the reason? You can see China green yield in these 35 years. So grow up quickly. That's the total output of the green. The yellow one is per yield error yield. See, so they are grow up, increased in the same speed. So I like to say, why so much green yield? Mainly depend on the yield level increase. Mm -hmm. No increase on arable land. So, and change the arable land. More crops, crops, more green produced. So, what's the reason? I had never saw some article or some papers analysis about this. On my personal experience, the ones in technology contribute about 70% of the enhanced yield. For example, high yielding seed, something like this. And new technology contribute about 30 of enhanced yield. For example, chemical fertilizer, pesticide, you know, okay? And however, the sustained development of agriculture in China faced the challenge of the soil and the environmental problems. Mm -hmm. First, overuse of chemical fertilizer. Well, the land in China is only 7% of the world land, but the amount of fertilizer used in China is 35% of the world usage. Okay, seven times. Okay, and another, from 1978 to 2014, green production is doubled in China, two times, but the amount of fertilizer used increased seven times. Thus, using such large amount of fertilizer is not only too costly, but also induce severe soil hardening. Soil structure has been destroyed in some place, in some region, and environmental contamination, especially the chemical fertilizer, the overused pesticide. Yeah, one in my childhood, there are many dragonflies flying in the sky, very many, many, many. But nowadays, when I get back to my hometown, maybe I'm not calculated, but maybe just no more than one tenth. Okay, another second is the water. Water resource shortage. Nowadays, China, especially North China, face the severe challenge of the water shortage. For example, in my hometown, which is one of the main region, my agriculture region, okay? When I was in my childhood, the underground water level is just about 10 meters, but nowadays had decreased to 60 meters. That means one year decreased 1.5 meters. Okay, that's just 35 years. Okay, you can see. Yeah, the continued decrease of the, in the level of the underground water will increase the cost of the agriculture production and more deeply has negative on our future generations. There's no in the recent 10 years, 20 years, maybe next 50 years, next 100 years. That's the problem, the challenge for sustained development of agriculture in China. And each year, China will import across from Italy, about 80 million tons of greens and some other fruits. Among these, three-fourths are soybeans. Please look at this table one. This analysis of import foods in China, okay? Don't care too much about the million tons, okay? That's the aggregate demand. That's the import volume. Soybean, edible oil, sugar, powdered milk, wine, beef. About 80% of the soybean was imported from foreign country. About 30% of edible oil imported. Also, 20% sugar, 25% powdered milk, 20% wine, and 30% beef. Also, some other food and agricultural products. For example, rice, about 3%, corn, maybe just 2%, fruit, seafood, 
coffee, chocolate, biscuit. Mm -hmm. So, two questions. First, why China imports crops every year? Some of you maybe simply think that's because China is short in short of the food or agricultural products. That's the very reason. But not at all. Another reason is some products import from foreign country has the advantage in high quality and cheap price. For example, China imports some rice, some corns. That doesn't mean China can produce it all just because of the advantage or the cheap price, something like this. Okay? Second question, why China mainly import soybeans? No other crops, no other greens, no coal, no rice. The main reason is soybean is a low yielding crops. It's land intensive crops. I'll give you a picture, figure. Last yielding level of the four crops, corn, rice, wheat, soybean. Soybean about three kilometers per hectare. You can see wheat is about 1.5 times than the soybean. On rice, doubled than the soybean. On corn, maybe five times than the soybean, the yielding, yielding level. So that means, therefore, importing soybeans will have China save more arable land. That's economic, also politic. Uh -huh. And if we convert the amount of import crops into land, just as I mentioned above all, then the amount of imported greens every year is equivalent to 40 billion square kilometers of arable land. Mm -hmm. That's economic. The China's total arable land is 120 million square kilometers. So together, that means 120 added 40, that's 160. Mm -hmm. Then if 40 million was imported, then in another word, China imported about 25% arable land. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And there are about 1.36 billion people in China know this. Uh -huh. The population may decrease to 1 billion in the 2000s and 100s. Okay? Yeah, that's the future 80 years. Okay? In that period, maybe that means 25 reduction. So in that time, China should able to sustain itself at that time. Therefore, that means China will and have to be an agricultural product importing country in the whole 21st century. With the use of agricultural machine and the development of new technology, personally, I think China will be able to increase another 15% of the crop production in the next 10 years. Less agricultural production. Mm -hmm. Second, food consumption in the future. How many food, how many greens should China use needed? The size of food industry in a country is determined by its population. There are 1.36 billion people in China nowadays, which account for 20% of the world population. Therefore, the food industry of China is the biggest in the world. China's population began to age from this year. What's the meaning? Oh, I'm sorry. What's the meaning? After this, okay, then China's population will begin to descend. Uh -huh. That should affect economic growth. No much consumer, but can also relieve the pressure of land use, water resource, and environment. So just a moment, I mentioned, China maybe can control its population, but what happened in the whole world? However, the world population will increase from 7.2 billion in 2014 to 8 billion in 2025, and 9.6 billion by the year of 2050, increased 11% and 
33% respectively. In the future, agricultural products will enter the phase of tight violence because the huge population increase in the whole world, especially India. Mm -hmm. The table one, structural analysis of the population in China for the next 10 years. You can see this table, the population will increase about 1.36 to 1.44, less 6% increasing mm -hmm. in China. Average age over 60 years old, nowadays about 15%, but 10 years later, 21%. Mm -hmm. Urbanization ratio, nowadays 54%, but 10 years later, it will increase to 66%. What's its meaning? Although there will be a population peak in 2024, food industry will de develop to its summit as early as 2020 because of the aging of population. You see, just a moment, the table, okay? Over age, 60 years, okay? 15%, 21%. Because the men getting older, less food they need. Uh huh. That's the reason. That's one reason. And for example, in China, the median age in 2001 is 29. And 2014 is 35 per age. Okay, that's some difference in US. I know the data in US. For example, that's 2001. That's last year. China is no 29. Uh, uh, 50 years before, no. Wow, I'm sorry. Maybe I changed another pin. No. Power American. Yeah, that's 50 years before. Nowadays. Yeah, that's the media age. So China getting older rapidly than the US. How about India? Just 29, just 29 years old. Okay, yeah, there should be more food needed. Yeah, and if the year 10 years later, the media age will grow to 14. With the increase of the media age, the demand for food will decrease. In fact, some of the sub-industries have stepped into a weak developing stage. For example, last year, the total production of meat only increased 2% than 2013. What's worse, the production of the beer industry in 2014 was decreased for the first time ever, decreasing 1% than 2013. Okay? Also, the industry in wine, I know, decreased about 6%. Okay? But this has some other reason okay, for the decrease for, in the wine. Mm -hmm. And if market saturation occurs, lots of sub industries will be reshuffled. They should be reshuffled. Many small food factories will be eliminated. But I think it is not a bad thing because small food factories is the important source for many food safety scandals, you know. Yeah. When rural residents move into the urban areas, they increase the demand for processed food, promoting dining out. In addition, there are some changes on the structure of consumptions. This is the figure six, comparison food consumption between rural and urban. You can see the blue refer to rural residents and the yellow urban residents. You can see green and alcohol consumption is decreased if the residents move from rural to urban. But some others, edible oil, pork, beef mutton, poultry, fresh eggs, milk, and aquatic products increased. Uh -huh. So you might think rural residents appear to eat more food than that of the urban residents due to their intensive labor. But it's not that simple. When rural residents move into the urban, their consumption of the grains and alcohols 
will decrease maybe about 50%, whereas there will be an increase on their consumptions of meat, dairy, aquatic products, beverage, and snacks, which are also made from greens. Okay? So if we take all these factors into consideration, rural residents and urban residents actually consume similar amount of food. I had ever calculated about this. Okay, I, I will now show the table on this. Yeah, nearly the same. Another, because of the cost on distribution and more high quality food available in the city, urban residents tend to spend more money. It's not the quantity. It's the money, spend more money on food than that of the rural residents. We predict that average food expenses of each urbanized rural resident will increase about 85%. In the next decade, there will be nearly 200 million rural residents be urbanized, which will contribute about 7% increase on food industry. Okay? That's food consumption in the future. Food safety in incident. Yeah, I think in American, some report about China, that's why I know the hot topics. Okay? Yeah. What's the reason? Which field? Livestock products, plant products, aquatic products, organic agriculture products, many, many reports. Okay? So, what's the reason? Immoral. Governments. No need to say more. Okay? You know it. Okay? Yeah. But maybe some other reason on the aspect of business on the aspect of economic. First, too many small food business. There are about 120,000 certificated food companies and countless workshops in China. Okay? Some of them out of the control. Uh -huh. Most of the food safety incident potentially were exact in small company. I estimate that at least 30% of them will be eliminated in the next 10 years. That's a good thing for the food safety. I'll give you another statistic. The top five beer companies take about 80% of the market shares. The top three dairy companies possess 50% of the market. The top 10 meat companies only share 25 market. What's its meaning? Okay, I'll give you an example. You know, 20 years before, less, ah, 30 years before, there are 827 beer companies in China. But nowadays, okay, together, just 20. That's the difference. Most of the small companies are merged and acquisition. Okay? Yeah. So nowadays, if you eat, drink the beer in China, no worry about it. Because all the beer company is huge. Okay? They should don't know some illegally. Okay? But if you eat meat, pork, beef, something like this, even myself, I live in China, I have a bit worry about this. Because too many companies. Okay? I don't know if it's really safe, something like this. That's the difference. So nowadays, okay, just as I mentioned, the top five beer companies take up 80%. Okay? Here you see, 80% market share. But how about the meat? The top 10 meat companies only share 24% market. So give China another 20 years. The meat industry will enter the phrase nowadays, the beer's industry. Okay? Yeah, we need time. Another reason, food logistic lag behind. Mm -hmm. Most food are storage and transported at ordinary temperatures in China. I'll give you a figure. The comparison of cold chain logistic between USA and China. The blue one, USA. The yellow is China. So first, fruit, fruit and vegetables in USA, 95% are transported, stored, and the cold chain, in cold chain, okay? But in China, just 5%. Mm -hmm. How about meat? 
In USA, 100%. But in China, just 15%. And agrotech products, in USA, 95%. In China, just 23%. You know, the farmer market in the Saturday in, hometown, uh, in downtown, OK? Yeah, maybe most of the time we buy fruit, we buy vegetable, buy meat in the supermarket. That's in USA. But in China, we mainly buy it on farmer market, even in Shanghai, OK? The huge city in China, about more than 60% of the food OK, fresh food, should be saying fresh food, are buying in the farm market, not supermarket, no coaching utilization. OK, that means hidden dangers to food safety. What? Rotten. So comparison of loss ratio between USA and China. So the fruit and the vegetables in USA, maybe just 5% rotten, throw it away. But in China, 25%. How about the meat? US, 5%. China, 12%. Throw away. And agrotech products, USA, 5%. China, 50%. But you don't think it should be thrown away. Some small companies, some small workshops will think, throw away. Who will give money to me? Some of them do a bad thing. Juggling quality guaranteed period. OK, not all, but some of them. OK, that's one reason that so many food safety accidents. I don't like to talk too much about the politics, something like this, or moral, something like this. But on the business, that's the disadvantage. We have no enough cold chain. OK, low temperature, yeah. So. Here is an old Chinese saying goes this. It takes 10 years to grow trees, but 100 years to rear the people. Some problems in China cannot be solved rapidly. It must be solved step by step. I think we need, in some industries, just like I mentioned just a moment, maybe need 20 years. Some other food industries maybe need another 50 years. I think China will be OK in the end of this century according to the food safety issues. And opportunities always go with the challenges. For example, you should know the market share of the foreign infant milk powder in China increased from 40% in 2007 to 80% in 2012 since the milk scandal was reported. As you know, contaminated by melamine. OK? That's very famous in the whole world. OK? So who takes advantage? Foreign products. Because in China, foreign products have good reputation in China. Oh, they think, oh, that's, that products will be safe, something like that's high quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the opportunity. That's my point of view about food safety incidents. The final topics. Investment opportunity in China. Mm -hmm. So that's the Fortune 500. OK, I think everybody here knows something about this. But if I ask, you are the students in maybe food science department, maybe you are a scholar or something like this, but I think maybe some of you don't know how much giant food company in Fortune 500. Maybe you don't care about this. OK, that's economic, no sense, no technology. But sometimes, maybe I can, we can pay attention to this. Last year, that's the Fortune 500 last year. This year, <laughs> didn't announce. OK, we have to wait to the August. OK, there are 13 food companies in Fortune 500. You should get familiar with the name. Uh -huh. Nestle, PepsiCo, Unilever, Lois, Sponge, Coca-Cola. Uh, Wilma, okay, AB, the beer giant, and Tyson Food, the meat, okay, the chicken, Kofka, this is a Chinese com uh, state-run company. Danone, okay, the water, the dairy, and the McDonald's, and uh, Heineken, beer. Who, which company earn more money? You can see the profit rate. Okay, Nestle, 10%. 
Pepsi, 10%, Unilever, also about 10%, then Coca-Cola, 18%, and AB beer, beer giant, 33%, and McDonald's, also 20%. There were much more money. Okay, so you can say Chinese, Kovko, no, just 0 0.1. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I want to say, tell you another story. In 2014, the three food companies in the Fortune 500, okay, all these giants had entered the Chinese market before 2000s. According to what I know, maybe the final one is the Tyson. Okay, the final one is the Tyson. That's in the year 1999. Okay, so the first one is Coca-Cola. Yeah, so domestic Chinese market meet international computation. You don't think the Chinese market belongs to the Chinese company? No, 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 international computation. And just as I mentioned, the first gen into China is Coca-Cola. This was, yeah, let me see, 35 years ago. Uh -huh. Nowadays, China has been the biggest overseas market for the company. The number two. Where is the number one? USA. But if in the year of 10 years later, 2025, China may replace USA as the biggest market. May. Mm -hmm. Because what's the reason? Population. Okay? Yeah. And only one Chinese food company entered the Fortune 500. That's Kofco, just as I mentioned. Okay? Yeah. But it's that state run. You know, it's not a private company. So sometimes, you know, it has some Chinese characteristic. So its products mainly edible oil, also some Great Wall Wine. Mm -hmm. So its products are only sold in China, not in international market. To some extent, China has no real world class food in the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so if if you are interested in Chinese food market, you like to investment, invest in China, uh, in China food industry, I have some suggestion as follows. Chinese food market is highly competitive. It will be better for a foreign company to enter the market by merge and acquisition instead of starting a new company. That's very dangerous, okay? And nearly half of the China's population lives in countryside. Just mentioned 46%. It will be very difficult for foreign goods to enter the rural market where the competition is somewhat really in disorder. Okay? In the city, it's better. Another reason is, you know, the farmer, okay, their income is a con comparatively low. They are very sensitive to the price. And pay attention to the debt difference between China and the USA. For example, pork hosts 64% the share of the meat market. Chicken in China, just about 20%. And how about beef? 9%. Martin, just 4%. Less. It's not the case in U.S. I think in U.S. maybe chicken is the number one. Okay, that difference. I think that's one of the reasons why Tyson's uh, they are just so-so in China's food industry. Okay, it's starting to pay more attention on beef, on mutton, but in China, the number one. Okay, okay, the share of the meat market is the pork. Okay, two-third. Yeah, and oatmeal is popular in U.S.A but its market potential in China is very small. You know, quick, okay? Into China market, according to what I know, two times, but nowadays, just so-so. Okay, because Chinese get used to eat porridge, okay, made by rice, okay? Yeah, so that's the difference. And in general, food industry is labor-intensive industry. Mm -hmm. So just as I mentioned, the salary the average per capita salary in Chinese is just one ninth compared with that of USA. But labor cost continues to rise in the recent years. More importantly, majority of their employees 
are the only child who are born after 1985. Okay, about 30 years or no more than 30 years. It's not easy to manage them. It's some change in the, this generation. Yeah, and finally, there are some cultural difference between China and the USA. For a company which is new to China and looking for opportunities, just as I mentioned, China is huge, the biggest market in the whole world because of the population. You can't neglect it, but the leadership may know little about China. I had made a connection, cooperated with several US companies. I found these problems. The leadership in USA, in headquarters, they know little about China. They like to do things in an American way, mm -hmm. but they may run into troubles. It's very important for the company to, to organize a team that understand both USA and China. It's very, very important. Yeah. So that's the investment opportunity in China. So that's my opinion. And closing remarks, undoubtedly, is 1.4 billion people means the largest food market in the world. With the growing aware of health, living style, more and more Chinese people realize the importance of health, diet, and high quality food. That should be the opportunity for foreign foods. Okay? So know this. So American food. So come from some other, let me see, Brazil, Argentina, New Zealand, Australia, usual. Many foreign foods sales in Chinese market. More importantly, China, China is in the progress of reform and opening. You should be able to see more changes in China in the near future. For scholars, for businessmen and politicians with strategic versions, food industry in China is absolutely deserving your attention. Okay? So next week should be China's Spring Festival. Okay? So I'd like to say Happy Chinese New Year and thanks for your time. Thank you. Okay, any questions? I'm sorry to say my spoken English is not very fluently. So if you have questions, just speak slowly so I can catch up with you. I can understand your question. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Answer a question. It's kind of interesting. The first part of your speech, you mm -hmm. talked about the uh, the concept of food security in the coming years. Uh, mm -hmm. Having enough food. From from what you are showing us, you you might be tempted to say or could say that uh, the Chinese policy of the one child per family mm -hmm. has been successful in regard to the future of its food food security. How would you? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's a good question. So, no, that's just one aspect. China, I think this policy, uh, this one child policy, how to be performed in China? Oh, you know, what's the prediction in 10 years ago? They predict that in the next 10 years, the Chinese population will increase to 1.6 billion. But just a moment, I mentioned in 2000, uh, China is, yeah? But the prediction made 10 years before, 10 years ago, they predict. It's, yeah. And finally, what's the peak? Wow, 1.7 billion. Huge, huge population. China can't, can't afford for that. But there is some balance about the one child policy. Okay? For example, I give you a information. Nowadays, okay, so if 100 child born, 54 boys, okay, and girls, that's the ratio. I think that's a severe social problems. You can see, 20 years ago, well, less fifteen percent of men have no wife to be the monk at all. 
Okay. So that's very severe social problems. Okay. So on the aspect of economic, maybe just the politics, I say one child policy is okay, but some other problems had appeared as unbalanced. Okay, especially another thing I have to say. Uh, policy also have some, I think, need to remind it. Okay, in the city, one wife, parents just can have one child in the city. If you are a city citizen, but if you are a farmer living in the countryside, if the first child is a girl, when she grew up to seven years old, then second child can be born if you are a farmer family. Okay, that's also the reason for the imbalance of the sex. So we need to think about this. But another statistics, nowadays Chinese think about these problems. There are new policy, which means if the husband or the wife is also one child, okay, you can give the second child, okay? Just I know in Guangdong province, one of the high population province, okay? Yeah, I think there are 10 million families can ask for the second birth, okay? They think maybe 20% will require, will ask for the second child. But the final result is only 10% ask for the second child. So that means even nowadays, Chinese government say, okay, you can make birth freely. That doesn't mean the population will really grow up rapidly. Because of some, some of the economic reasons, something like this, it's very strange. In my generation, most family has maybe three or four children. In my parents' generation, most of the family have seven or eight children, okay? But nowadays, in the next generation, maybe just one or two, something like this. That's the right re reason I had analysis. China getting older and older rapidly. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah, sorry, lady first, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't catch up with your, your final word. I'm sorry. You, I know you asked some uh, uh, percentage in meat industry. Right, because of cold chain. Cold chain. Because the cold chain is it start, it's startling. Because with, would you, expect, you would expect more food safety incidents mm -hmm. because of no cold chain in beef. Ah. Oh. So do you see more? Is that okay? Right. Yeah. Oh, only uh, the word I, I I don't make make it clear. So maybe can help can you help me? Okay, in Chinese. Okay. Yeah. They had error. So 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 so. Just give you back to the. The slide. You know, there are a scandal uh, was reported in this year. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, also a milk company. So, the milk maybe in the low temperature just can store for one week. Then, one week passed. The milk didn't sell out. Then they just take down the milk from the shelf and mix with some fresh milk. Together again sold. Okay, that's the reason. Because you threw it, you means a lot of loss. But nowadays, I must say, something happened 10 years before. Nowadays, getting better and better. Okay.
Ja. Ja. Oh, I know your question. I'll give you a, I'll give you a data. Just a moment, I mentioned in five Fortune, uh, Fortune 500, there are 13 food companies. In China, in Chinese 500, Fortune 500, the Chinese company, there are 22 food companies. Okay, according to what I know, about four general manager, four. Uh, you know, president of the, these uh, food companies are graduated from university, just the four, okay, in these 22 companies. And only one is specialized in food science. That's the, maybe that's the first generation, okay. First, I, I think maybe in the future something will change. And about the research, truthfully saying, most of the China food companies don't pay much more attention on research. If they pay attention, just try to maybe just quality, more time storage, or something like this. Okay? Yeah, and uh, I think maybe no more than, I think according to Wayne, no more than 5% uh, food companies has the department of the research. Okay? Yeah, that's, uh, but I think in the future something may, may, may change. Maybe. Well, this depends on the boss to some extent. Okay? If the boss graduated from the university, he has a PhD, something like that, they'll think, yeah, research is, is very important. But if just the boss in China, we call it Tu Hao. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they don't think, what's the use? So if you, you know, in some other industry, for example, IT, okay? Something like this, I think. The big man, the boss, the general manager, president must be graduated from also the university, even have a PhD in some maybe U.S. university. But in food industry, no, 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 no. They need maybe another. I think no, there's something start to change. Maybe ten years, maybe ten years. Let by let us die by step. Yeah. Okay. He had a question. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You just mentioned how the China deal with the waste food. Uh, mm -hmm. no, just like Europe or something like that. Food it. waste is huh. more uh, now. Just where, is it? where is it? Where, where is, is it? Wow. In the markets or in the, in the homes? Or? I know your meaning. Uh, surely there's no statistic, no official statistic about it. Because uh, if government knows this, they should say no. Um, yeah, sometimes just they will give some discount, okay? Maybe sell it for animals, for animal feed, something like this. But some, you can't, for example, the milk, okay? You can't restart it anyway, okay? The time is too long, just throw it away. And some meat. Some veg oh, meat maybe just give to the animal. Some vegetable fruit maybe just threw away. Okay. Also, according to what I know, maybe <sighs> I'm sorry to say, according to what I know, some small companies will buy it. For example, do some juice. Okay, <laughs> something like this. It's illegal, but not too much. Not too much. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the products, maybe I buy it back home in the refrigerator uh, after the date, I just throw it away anyway. That's not in the calculate. Yeah, okay. Please. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of trying to get selling here, like in the US, trying to learn like this method technology, is myself included. Mm -hmm. so
Okay. Oh, maybe that's my mistake. <laughs> I should give you some hope, okay? <laughs> so, um, I can, uh, three suggestions. First, if you pay attention to the chemistry, it's better for best taste, okay? And long term to stall, okay? That's one. And the second one, I just mentioned, okay, low temperature logistic. And the third is food package. Mm -hmm. You know, food package is about, uh, about 18, share about 18% cost in the food, the whole food prices. So in China, yeah, about 18% of cost is about the food package, maybe I think some companies nowadays pay more attention in, on this field. Okay, that's just my personal uh, suggestion. Okay, but some other, if you are to be official, to, 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 to do some uh, quality checking, some inspection, something like that, okay, you're okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you think the most opposition will be in company or in government or in, I don't know, like... I have to tell you, I had ever read the paper, the article, which investigate the liberal their education background in different industry. Food industry is very, very low, truthfully saying. Okay? Yeah, truthfully saying. I, I, I have to say, tell you the truth. Yeah, compared with some other, other maybe IT, automobile, okay, something like this. Yeah, the education background, in, yeah, 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 you know. But what about the multinationals in China? They care about that. Multinational, you mean company? Company. In, not the com like Nestle or yeah, that are in China. Okay. Of these too. So I think, just as I mentioned, the high quality food is welcome in China. But for some Chinese companies, if you say, I'm okay, I'm the best, that doesn't mean the customer will believe in what you're saying. But for the foreign products, it should be okay. But nowadays, something it seems to change. Just as I mentioned, the meat industry just increased one percent, and the beer industry go get down one percent. I know something. For example, I heard, you know, the hugest beverage company in in China, Wahaha, you should notice, decreased seven percent last year. Sales decreased seven percent. I know, according to what I know, Coca-Cola is just equivalent than the year, last year. And Pepsi, someone tell me, decreased 30%. Okay, I'm not sure, just talking. Okay, just, just, just chat. I, I don't, don't know some status, official. Okay, so maybe, just as I mentioned, some food industry in China has grown to the peak. Maybe just this volume. So what's the future for the in, for what will happen to the next high quality food, okay? Because most people have the money, they don't care about the price, they just want to buy what is better, okay? I think that's the opportunity, yeah, okay. Please. Can you comment on the use of food waste to energy production? Like for example, you grow a lot of rice. Do you use rice straw for energy production or food waste? Uh, I'm sorry, I know you talk about the food waste, but maybe you, you mean you can, can produce some other products by the waste pr food? Yeah, yeah. biomass, bio gas. No, 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 no. In China, maybe, you know, if you are animal food, it's maybe because it's energy, okay? If just fruit, the vegetable, no, 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 no. Biomass, no. Unreasonable. Mm-hmm. No, no, because it's, I think, personally, I think it's unreasonable. So they, they get tapioca from other... On the aspect of the economic, okay, that's unreasonable. Okay, yeah. Maybe that conversation can continue uh -huh. later. Um, 
Yeah, I thank you. I want to, um, before thanking Dr. Stein again, I would like to just point out that he will be here for some time, a, a little time. So if you want to have some separate conversation with him, like on the beat in the cold chain, um, or on R&D, excellent question, um, please, uh, you can contact me, or you can contact, he'll be, he'll be here, okay? And so um, I, he has published three, book, three books. I have four books. These are done in the 2000s, yeah, time. <laughs> anyway. And, and so it, it's in Mandarin, for those of you who speak Mandarin. And um, so I want to thank you for, we all want to thank you for your presentation. He worked hard because English is not his first language. And I found a lot of it was looking in the crystal ball, oh. which you have done and think about. Okay. A lot. So a small token of appreciation. Yeah, thank you so much. For being part of your class and seminar with the students. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Please give me a picture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Okay. And there's some refreshments outside, and there's some people you may want to mix it with. Okay. Hi, oh, nice to meet you here. Yeah. Yes, good job. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Very Thank you. Talk. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. 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 I just want to uh, say wonderful. Maybe. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah, then yeah, you yeah. feel shy because my spoken English questions. is. A... I have questions too. No. Very okay. thought provoking. I liked okay. your organization of analysis. Okay. And opinion. Okay. Well, very well done. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Very good, very good. Thank yeah, you very you're much. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for your encouragement. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.